G'day. Just wanting to uh, do a bit of a demo today, and I'll break this up into a few parts and edit it down later. But uh, I've got a painting here, which I've only, I've, I know I've got a problem with, but I've just discovered it's got to go in an exhibition within two weeks. So I've got to clean it up. Now, uh, it's got a lot of dust on it, and it needs a wash. Now, this is an oil painting, so oil paintings you can do this with with a very mild detergent, and I'll step you through that in a minute, but um, I'm just going to demonstrate how this works. Let's have a look at the problem first. So you can see there, on the, on the painting surface, there's sort of specks going on and little hairy bits. And that's because this painting in transport had been covered with a blanket, which was fairly old and dusty from the look of it. So I'm going to compare that piece to the bit down here, which I cleaned last week. Um, and you'll see there, you can't see much of that dust. There's still a little bit there, but there's not much left in that spot. So compare there to um, any of these bits here. And I'm just going to get the focus going right. And they've got dust all over them. You see the dust is quite heavy in that space. So what I'm going to do is clean that up. Back here, of course, you can't see that problem, but uh, let's, let's go and have a look at the solution. So let's have a look at uh, cloths. Okay, so there's sort of three different ones. This one here, if I needed something a bit tougher, but no, it's, I don't like the pimples on this uh, to, to do that. Uh, so, well, that's a, that's a no. There's sort of a couple of modern cloths out nowadays. There's sort of the light, fluffy one like this, this has been wet in the wash, but normally really fluffy. But unfortunately, it also can, can leave fluff if it's not um, settled well. So that one's not bad. I wouldn't say that. But one of these type ones with just a closed surface uh, with a loop, closed loop in that. You should be able to see that hopefully on my fingers. Yep. And that's not bad. And that'll do the job quite fine. Give me a little bit of strength just to, to some of those hairs may be a little bit sort of stuck on there but um so one of those i'm not sure who makes this one can't see it anymore but um sabco type of thing um and yeah the problem with some of the microfibers is that they'll shed microfibers so you need to be a little careful of microfiber cloth new ones probably okay if it's had a bit of a wash first but just be careful that we don't want really tiny fibers either okay now for water um we just want lukewarm water i've got non-mixer taps so i've got to set that up um and you'll find that um you're, this is for your comfort as much as anything you're going to have your hands wet for a little bit so um not too hot a bit of lukewarm that's enough to feel it's warm I'm in Tasmania at the moment, so the te water temperature is probably around about five or six degrees coming out of that tap, so I don't want cold water. So now, what do you use as a detergent? We need a little mild detergent. It doesn't have to be very strong. In fact, we don't want it a strong detergent. We won't, don't want it harsh. So I've got two choices that I've got available for me in my home. I use Amway products. So this one here is a delicate. It's a laundry detergent. Uh, the important thing if you're using a liquid laundry detergent that it's a clear one, it hasn't got any sediment. It's not one of those sort of thick detergents. So make sure it's like that. A delicate detergent will be fine. The other one I can use, and I'll, I'll use this one. I used this one the other day to do that first bit of cleaning. Quite happy to use this other one. This is a product called SA8. It's a purely um, biologically safe um, choice. Uh, and it's a basically a suffocant. And look, this is quite strong and powerful. I'm literally using a drop or two, and that's all. Um, just this one probably won't give me much bubble either. Um, might just use a fraction more than that, but not very much. And that just sort of will take a you know, chance of a little bit of you know age grease off the surface without touching the, the solid oil. Uh, that have been being fixed on that. So just a little bit there. I don't know whether you can see that down the, the barrel. Go um, okay, this way for a second. Row. 
hardly call it sudsy, but just enough just like that. You don't want it slippery on your fingers. You don't want to leave a film on the on the thing either. On my fingers. So now this is the area I'm going to clean. Uh, I'm just going to take my cloth. I'm not going to soak the cloth. I'm not going to get the cloth wet. I'm just going to get the corner of it wet. Get some stuff in there and then squeeze it out. So I'm not putting a lot of moisture onto the painting. Uh, and I'm just going to uh, be working in little areas like that uh, to, to do this. So I'll put the bowl down so I don't spill it. And um, you don't have to be in and out of the bowl all the time. You're not like you're cleaning off a dirty face of a little kid. Um, so now you're just very lightly. You can change the direction of your, your thing. Now this is, I'm working, this is a piece of uh, Belgium linen. It's very, very uh, heavy linen. Now you better be a bit careful if your painting hasn't been proper in oil painting. You, I think my proviso is... Um, if you're unsure about your particular painting, get it checked first. You don't want to do this on a water-based painting. It would melt away. Um, but because this is an oil painting and I've done it myself, I know what's underneath here. And it's quite a solid uh, piece of work. So I'm, I'm someone, you know, as a painter, you, you, you get told as a kid, don't, don't touch the paintings and things in the gallery. And for good reason, you know, particularly if the painting's old. But... I'm a painter that takes my paintings out in the back of cars and bush and stuff like that. So oil painting is good because it's a bit tough. Um, and will clean up quite nicely. This will probably need as a painting, I'll see how it cleans up, but it'll probably need a, a, um, an, another varnish. I'm not quite sure whether I've varnished this one in the past or not. If I have, then there's a lot more extra protection on this painting than I, than I have if I haven't. But I'll clean it up, I'll let it dry back and then decide whether or not I need to give it a varnish before the exhibition. But as I said, I've only got two weeks for the exhibition. So I, you know, I'm not doing that restorer's job. You see in those restoring paintings where they got little, you know, these things in there. Yeah, you do that when it's a million dollar painting or a $500 million painting and you, you've got that. Um, this is quite an expensive painting by, 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 um, you know, normal standards at some levels, um, what you expect in a normal household. Uh, these, this painting's worth about three and a, four and a half, five thousand dollars. So, uh, but it's pretty tough. And, um, you know, that's the nice thing about oil paint. It's very forgiving and very tough. And you can see, although there's some dampness in there, so the colors will shine a little bit better in the dampness. And when it dries, it'll probably mat up a bit, which will then tell me, yeah, do I need to give it another um, another glaze uh, with a with a transparent varnish? Um, I've just discovered there's a new new product you can put between your painting and the varnish, uh, which will help later conservators to, to to know the difference between your painting and the product at the end. So I'll be starting to use that. Um, so I worry about sometimes with these, because with, I use a lot of glazes and a lot of glazing materials over the top of my paintings. I'm worried if someone cleans it in the future, they'll clean off those glazes and leave the undercoating. Um, it's a bit worried sometimes about that. I've got a fair bit of painting to go, but you can see I don't have to be too precious. Again, you can't really do this easily with an acrylic paint. You'd need to just double check on how you would take that from a, a lot of acrylic paints are finished with a varnish, so you're probably okay as well. But the other problem is you sometimes think that your substrate, if you're using one of these, if your painting's made on one of these really cheap canvases, you can buy at the local, you know, Bunnings or Spot, soft, Spotlight or even some reasonable art shops, they sell these fairly cheap thin paintings and the canvas on the back of them uh, I've got a lot of glues in them and they're sort of glued a Surface with not very heavy. This is a beautiful Belgium linen. So it's not a problem like that um, But I'd be worried about water getting into the back 
if it wasn't this Belgium linen, if it was, if if that was a uh, a cheap canvas substrate, water gets in the back of that, I would be worried about the however that's been made lifting off. So this is a piece of Belgium linen, and um, it's quite thick and heavy. It's got the oil paint preservation here, so it's designed for both. Um, and it's prime bright in that sense. And the back is quite thick. And you can sort of see that thickness in there. And what I do often is just hold it up to the light. If you've got a cheaper canvas, you can see probably off the edge at the back, hold it up to the light a bit. And you shouldn't be able to see. I'll just do this around on my, on my camera for a second. You can sort of see it's got a really tight weave. You can see through it but it's not full up with glue. Some of the modern canvases and, and, and stuff that you, you get on the cheap space, they're like they've just filled this totally up, not with the not with the gesso or the paint, but they've sort of created this canvas just by a very thin cotton muslin almost and uh, with, with, with plastic glues. Now this is properly primed, this is what I use uh, and um, it becomes pre-primed, it saves me mucking it up uh, and a really high quality. But this stuff is expensive too. If you're buying linen, you know, a metre of this stuff, it's 210 long, but a metre of this stuff is worth $180. So the linen on a canvas this size that I'm working with, it's around about $100 worth of material. Uh, so you don't muck it up, um, but the best quality materials, the best quality product. So I'm just going to do a little bit of work on this now. I need to get this whole thing finished. So I need to now work a little bit methodologically so I make sure I get everything done. But I'm just going to do a little bit of work on it now, close up the video, and then I'll show you some finished products uh, when I've, I've let it dry. But uh, at the moment, now I'll just get on to work. So dip it in, squeeze it out, and now... Now this painting is actually 20 years old now, um, or 22 years old in fact, um, so it stands really well. Um, but sometimes, you know, you, things will happen with your paintings and, you know, they get dirty. Sometimes they get a bit damaged, a couple of paintings I've had a little bit of a, you know, a bit of paint chip off and oh, one there I've got a... Just get a little dab of paint and reconstitute it later on in life. Of course, they, they, they can sometimes radically change. And, and you know, big artists' works have had things totally taken out and added in. And cleaning processes, fortunately, can tell the difference. The painting behind here is a work in progress. Um, I'm just finishing it off, haven't been able to get out on the side at that location, it's up in New South Wales. Uh, so, um, fortunately I'm just having to studio it, so I don't get onto it very often because I much prefer to be out there painting. But now, I can't access the back of this, but I'd be pretty confident there's no moisture and water going through. So I'll stop the video there and, uh, well, the video's not finished. I'll show the end product when I'm done. Well, I've now given it a clean and just looking at my cloth. Um, yeah, there's 20 years worth of dirt there, uh, a little bit. Interestingly, I've got a little bit of blue there. That'll be um, potentially a little bit of the paint, which was... A little bit worrying, maybe I scrubbed a bit harder and I think I did that up in this area here. So just lighten it up a little bit, um, but just a minute amount. I don't think I removed any anything major, but the whole thing has been cleaned up and you can see the cloth is quite dirty now. Now if I go in and have a look at the paint surface, 
I'll go this way, it's probably better with the light reflecting onto that direction. You can't see that great you know, mob of dusty parts on there anymore. That's all gone. Um, if I varnish this again, I'll just give this a double check. I don't want to put varnish on this and um, be adding the dusty bits into the painting. So I'll give it a little bit of a careful observation when it's dry. Let's dry I'm about to see if there's any differences. Now I had noticed one thing though when I was doing this, and I thought I had this on the work and I hadn't picked it up uh, when I was on the video before, but there's a little dot there. That's a little bit of paint chip that's come out. You can see the, the raw linen underneath that. And that didn't come with the cleaning that happened beforehand. Not sure when that happened. Uh, so I'll have to touch that up a little bit. As the artist, I can do that because I know exactly what paint I've used in here. Um, I know that I've used um, uh, Van Dyke Brown, I've used some Ivory Black, and I've used some Transparent Black. So I know what I've used, so I'll just very carefully touch that up. If I was touching up a work that was not mine or something later, I probably wouldn't do it. I'd be very careful to do it. But I'd probably varnish it first and then touch it up so that the conservator later would know what I'd done. Uh, but because I'm the artist, I'm not worried by that. It's very small and um, I'll fix that up. So I'll stand back now. You can't really tell a huge difference. I'm in pretty poor light at the moment. Uh, and that's the thing with noting. I might go get a light and get you to see the painting under proper gallery type lighting. I've just introduced a light to the side there. And as you can see, uh, the painting actually brightens up quite a lot from what it looked like before in the dull light here. The problem uh, you need to consider as you're thinking about lighting, if you've got a really good painting, get a nice down light on it. Um, it's quite easy to do in these days with these beautiful lead down lights. And um, I can look at this now in a little bit of a careful detail. And I can see there's virtually no dust on that whatsoever anymore. It's nice and clean, nice and crisp. But I paint outside in the natural light. So, you know, when, I, when I'm painting in the sunlight, I'm painting outside in natural, everyday bright light, normally speaking. Even in the rainforest, the light's still pretty bright compared to indoors. So you just need to take that into account uh, because the painting's painted on location, not in a studio. It's painted, you'll find that uh, they sing when they get the right light on top of them as well. Um, so there we go. That's how I clean my painting and it's all ready to go, nearly ready for the exhibition. I think I might give this one a, um, a varnish. Uh, if I did varnish it before, it was literally um, 15, 16 years ago. You don't want to over varnish your work. Uh, sometimes the paintings, the oil paintings get a little bit flat in the dark areas if you don't. Uh, this one's actually come up quite well, but I won't really know until it's 100% dry from the clean I've given. It's basically touch dry now, but um, and I can see in those areas there. Just to show you that in these areas here, uh, you can see the flatness. These areas here still got some shine on them, um, but there's flat areas in here. So um, a varnish will bring that back up and deepen up the colour to what it's like and basically when you're using wet paint, um, the oil's in there. And that's why traditionally all paintings get varnished. But I'll let you a secret, acrylic paintings are even worse. Unless they're varnished, they go flat straight away. So um, you, all, all paintings need that varnish so that um, you get that, that reflective deep surface. Um, but um, yep. So we'll do some work on that. But isn't that gorgeous? I love this beautiful lyrical paint and the lovely way. And it's quite, you know, expressive and fun. It might look very realistic back here. And um, back here, I've got to go all the way back to see the whole painting. Um, but, and it's in my laundry and the painting board and the ironing board as well. But here we are. That's a painting. It looks very photographic, very realistic, but I can assure you that my paintings are very expressive and uh, because of the way I work in layers, um, it's just full of joy in paint and I love that.